Welcome once again to Combined Worship with Rehoboth Presbyterian Church and First Presbyterian Church of Rush River Township. We're glad you're joining us today. We are all worshiping in our own place, but the Spirit of God is with each of us, uniting us as we seek God's mercy and grace anew and afresh today. We hope that you will be blessed by all that is said, all that is done, by our prayers and by the Word of God. Good morning. Come before the Lord with joyful songs, because he is good, because he is generous, because we lack nothing. Let us enter his gates with thanksgiving and fill his courts with praise. Amen. How quickly we forget that we are an Easter people, raised up out of the ways of death into fullness of life. The power of death leaves us shaken and afraid, but God in Christ calls us out of our fear to experience a presence that embraces us with eternal hope. We confess now all that keeps us from accepting the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So now let us join together in the prayer of confession. Will you join me in unison? All who repent and turn to you, please heal every contrite heart with the promise of redeeming grace. Forgive all our sins and cleanse us from an evil conscience. Through the perfect sacrifice of Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ has died for our sins. He made full atonement for us. We are forgiven in him, and we have the promise of eternal life. Thanks be to God that we are his children forever. Amen. And will you respond with me? Alleluia. Amen.
May the peace of Christ be with you. Okay, it's time for the children's message, and as usual, I have a question for you. I ask you questions because you guys really know a lot. Well, the question is, does God still love us when bad things happen? Mm -hmm. We're going to be talking about peace and God's care. Well, let's see. Have you ever had so much fun that you felt like falling down laughing? I bet you have. Look at this. And then you did fall down. Did that ever happen? Look out. Yeah. Everybody's fallen down a few times. Ouch. That hurt. You know it does too. Back in my day, boy, they gave us methylate. <laughs> we didn't have antibiotics. Maybe you got butted by a billy goat. Or maybe you butted a billy goat. Well, that'd be a big headache. But does that mean that God doesn't love you anymore? Hmm. No, of course not. That's silly. God loves us forever. Don't ever forget that. Always remember, when storms come, and they will, the sun, sun, do you see what I did there? <laughs> the sun will return. And then all your friends can come out and play. Because God loves you. Dear Lord, help us as we read your word together. Give us your understanding and reveal your truth. Open our minds, hearts, and souls to all that your word offers us. Amen. Our first scripture lesson is from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 17 through 19. If you invoke as Father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ like that of a lamb without defect or blemish.
Our Psalter lesson today is Psalm 116, verses 12 through 15, to be spoken in unison. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. Our second scripture lesson today is from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 36 through 41. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Before we go into the message, let us pray for the Lord's inspiration and understanding. Join me now. Holy Father, we pray, grant us understanding, grant us wisdom to know how to apply the holy truths in your word. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Amen. This morning we come to a uh, verses in the book of Acts. We're in the second chapter, and Peter, at this point, is addressing a large crowd which had gathered because of the strange phenomenon of the apostles' words concerning Jesus our Lord being spoken in many different languages that the numerous visitors to Jerusalem at this important feast time were speakers of, that they could all understand no matter what country they were from. And it seemed to them that something unusual and special was happening. And so Peter took the time to correct a few mistaken ideas. Number one, the uh, crowd, some of them said, you're drunk. That's what this is all about. You're babbling. And Peter said, no, a little too early in the morning for that action. And others scoffed, as people will. They see the signs, they hear the message, they still don't believe. But then there were others who listened. And this is what Peter had to say to them. And may our hearts be as open as theirs were. Peter said, therefore, let the entire house of Israel. Now, remember, he's speaking to the people of God. This is very early in the church's history. The missionary work to the Gentiles, to the rest of the world, in other words, had not yet commenced. And so he's speaking to those that Jesus said, I come for first. These are the lost sheep of Israel. These are the people of God who need to hear the more complete word of truth. And that is that know for certainty that God has made Jesus both Lord and Messiah. In other words, he's the 
ruler, the king, but he's also the person in the, in the office of the Messiah that was sent to you not to overthrow Rome, not to effect sweeping political changes here on earth, but to guide you into accepting and living in the ushering of the kingdom of God, which is now among us. And, and how is it among us? Remember, right before this, the Holy Spirit descends on the apostles and they begin their ministry, as I said, speaking to the various multilingual crowd in their languages and praising God. So in other words, what he's saying is this Messiah is ushering in a new era for you. You might have thought it would be with the sword, but it's a different one. This is the sword of the spirit and the word of God, which cuts deeper than any two-edged sword. And so therefore he said, this Lord and Messiah that God has validated and established you, and this is where it gets tough, you crucified. Now, we know that the Romans literally nailed Jesus to the cross. We know that there were accomplices within the larger Israeli community, the Supreme Court of their day, the Sanhedrin, passed judgment on Christ, but they could not execute judgment on him, which they wanted to be capital punishment. So they sent him to the Romans under Governor Pontius Pilate. And of course, what came out of that was Pilate said, listen, I'm turning this back over to you. Wash my hands of it. The crowds are screaming crucify. So he says, go ahead, we'll do it. And under his auspices, but certainly not under his direct order, Jesus Christ was crucified for you and for me. Now, here's the important part. And this is what my message revolves around. Is it's, but basically the title is, brothers, sisters, <laughs> what shall we do when bad things happen? The first thing you ask is why. And the second thing you ask is what. What do we do? We're in a situation like that right now with our current quarantine situation and the COVID-19 virus and the suffering, both physical and emotional and economic, that it is reeking on our society and as the whole world, basically. So they asked, when they heard this, it says they were cut to the heart. Now there's a really good phrase. How many times have you been cut to the heart? Think of it this way. One of the most painful cuts that anybody can get is a paper cut, am I right? Okay. Now imagine one of these terrible little things that occurs usually to your hands. Imagine that occurs not to your physical heart, the pump that circulates blood around your body, but to your spirit, your emotions, your mind, your psyche, your soul. It's your cut. You're cut, but you're not gonna bleed to death. You're cut, but you're cut in a very specifically painful way. And you notice that about paper cuts, they're, they're very precise. And so the pain is located, and thank God, it's limited to that area unlike other injuries. But nonetheless, it's noticeable. And these devout people who were listening, by the way, just as you are today, said, well, what, what shall we do? In the face of this calamity, in the face of this tragedy, brothers, sisters, what should we do? And Peter said, repent. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins will be forgiven and you shall receive the Holy Spirit. Now, let's back up on that answer. The question itself was a wise one. They did not react and say, it wasn't us. We didn't crucify him. They owned it. 
That's the first part that I want to mention is they owned the tragedy. Now that takes time. You have to process the guilt. You have to process the shock. You have to process the reality of, oops, we messed up. Secondly, Peter's prescription for them was, first of all, repent. Now, that word literally means to turn around. Anytime you see re, usually means do it again. Turn around, start again, try to do better next time. Repent, and then he says, to these people who have not received Christian baptism, and be baptized. Now, most of you listening, uh, you've fulfilled that, and that's okay. This doesn't have to fit one-to-one -to, -one to still be relevant and pertinent to our lives today. Certainly, repentance can happen at any time and to anyone. Well, baptism is usually a one-time thing, <laughs> usually. <laughs> but then he says, in the name of Jesus Christ, so in other words, identify with Jesus. In that baptism, you identify with his death, his burial, and then his resurrection. Now remember, he's talking to adults. and He's not talking to infants. Uh, we will baptize Trevor William Smith uh, next week. And uh, he will experience that but he probably won't remember it, but it will happen. And it is applicable to him as much as it is to the full grown adult who does it like these people were about to. But I will baptize him in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But since he was talking about Jesus Christ, Peter said the name of Jesus, meaning the authority of Jesus. In other words, under the auspices, under Jesus's guidance, you become a follower of his, you become identified with him, death, burial, resurrection in Christ. And the seal of the Holy Spirit then was placed upon you. And this is what the Christian has. The Holy Spirit is alive and at work in this world today. And even though our viruses scare us, and there have been many before, and there will be many after, and tragedies will come and tragedies will go, one presence will never leave, and that is the Holy Spirit, who not only dwells in this world, but dwells in our hearts, in our inner person, in our minds and thoughts and our emotions, in the depths of our being. So Peter is giving a prescription, as it were, not for a virus, not for a pandemic. Although sin can be seen that way, you can't hide from it. He's saying, if you want inoculation, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, be baptized, all of you who haven't yet gone that route. And you'll receive the Holy Spirit because Christ came in order to give you another comforter. He promised another comforter. He said, it's better I go away because then the comforter will come. If I don't leave, he's not coming. It'll be better for you to have the Holy Spirit than to have one person, Jesus, at one place at one time on this earth. Now the Holy Spirit is worldwide. So as we worry about the virus that keeps us indoors and its worldwide spread, remember there is a spirit that is among us. It is not something to be afraid of. It is the Holy Spirit. And I say this to encourage you because remember, these stories, though they happened long ago, are meant for you today. That's why I preach them, because they tell me there is hope. There is help. There is victory in Jesus. There is a spirit that is alive in this world and that will make you alive and quicken you. And that life will be eternal. And so it says, almost as an epilogue, after Peter said, this is for everybody, men, women, and children, far off and near, Save yourselves from the corruption that's among you. And that day, 3,000 persons were baptized, believed, repented, were added, and devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, fellowship, and to the breaking of bread and prayers. 
That's church. Next week, we will have communion. We will have a baptism. How about some repentance this week? We'll round it off. Acts chapter 2 is as valid and it is as pertinent today as it was 2,000 years ago. The church is relevant. No matter what we're going through, this is the repository of the faith, the people of God, and this is the hope of God, that Christ bore our sins on the cross, died, was buried, paid the penalty for our sins, rose again on the third day, ascended into heaven, sitteth at the right hand of the Father, and shall come again. But in the meantime, the Holy Spirit is here with us, in us, and I encourage you to embrace the Holy Spirit. Invite the Holy Spirit into your life. And if you will do so, your life will change. Those who accepted Christ on that day became different people, and the world was different for them. Perhaps now that we've had a chance at a repose, and unfortunately many have passed on. I have two personal friends that I grew up with that passed from COVID-19. But perhaps now that the rest have had a repose, we can come out of this a better people, a more spiritual people, a people that understands that the material world is not the only world. And that there is a larger, bigger picture. And we can devote ourselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, and to the breaking of bread and prayers. Do you think we could do that? I do. Let's pray and ask the Lord to help us on that way. Would you join me now? Holy Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that you would send your guiding, soothing, comforting hand of the Spirit to blow into our lives and into our hearts to not only refresh, but to cleanse, to remove those things which are in us and among us that need to go. And to help us to refocus our attention onto the Lord, the teaching of the apostles, the breaking of bread, the fellowship of the saints, and prayer in secret, in the place of your heart, through the guidance of the Holy Spirit, as well as prayer, together united as the church, the living body of Jesus Christ our Lord. In his name we ask, and let all of God's people say, Amen. Thank you very much, and God bless you. Hi, this is Pastor Don, coming to you again from the Bat Cave, and I just want to say how proud I am 
of everyone at Rehoboth, our members, our friends, our associates, everybody who has pitched in and given. I want to thank you. You didn't let down. That's really something. These are times when people obviously are scrambling for provision, for needs, for employment, for putting food on the table. And yet our church has moved on and we haven't had a drastic dip. If anything, our offerings have gone up. And so I say to you, congratulations and thank God. Thank God for his grace among us. Rehoboth does a wonderful work and it needs to continue to do so for many generations to come until Christ comes again. And you're making that possible. And I just wanted to thank you. Amen. God, we thank you for your manifold blessings in Christ Jesus. Who but thee can deliver us from trouble and adversity? For thou art the God of new beginnings. Lift us with the strength of thy mighty hand until all is brought into harmony with your divine will and thy peace reigns in our hearts renewing us by thy Holy Spirit and expanding our horizon. Amen. It is time for us to go to our sharing of joys and concerns and what I would like to do is to um, let both churches know that if you want to have a prayer request mentioned, that you would please turn these in to the respective church offices so that by permission, we will be able to lift these up. Otherwise, pray as you have perhaps your bulletins before you and you have the people's names and situations, pray for that. And as for announcements, uh, we will have communion. It, our church service will be at Rehoboth next week again. And um, Trevor Smith will be baptized and we'll probably work that into the week after's service. We'll see, it, cause it's gonna be after uh, say 12, 12.30, but nonetheless, he, yeah, he joins us in baptism, it's pretty cool. And uh, anyway, so as for announcements and as for prayers, let us know so that we don't overstep. And as for prayers, let us lift up uh, Justin's uh, Walsh's mother, uh, Sandy Walsh, and let us uh, lift up Jeremy Wolf, who is uh, on the way of recovery uh, and doing well, and Melba. And uh, for those others and those that I forget and don't mention, please don't be offended. But let us now just say a prayer in our hearts for help, especially during this time. There's been so much tragedy and so much fear. Let's ask the Lord to help us now. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we just ask, grant us peace. Grant us freedom and deliverance from fear. Would you bless those who have been stricken and sick, those who have been uh, injured, those who are in fear, those who have been economically impacted, those in want, those in need. Would you help our churches would you bless us and continue to protect us? Send us into this world, Lord, but keep us, we pray, 
from all evil. Bless our community. Bless our nation and bless the world. And may we come out of this a better people to the glory of thy name. And as we pray in Jesus' name, let all of God's people say, Amen. Thank you very much. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. My friends, we are Easter people, and on this third Sunday of Easter, I invite you to take with you the joy, the peace, the hope of the resurrection of Jesus Christ into you each day as you go forward. We know that God is with us, so let us share all that he has given us with others. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.